chapter 4, a maturing walk of faith will separate itself unto God. The first 12 verses are all about that. A maturing saint knows that there's a choice between worldliness or godliness. A maturing saint in verse 1 will avoid reptilian desires. You say, what's that? I told you last week, a reptile will grow bigger every year of its life if you don't hinder it. If it has proper food and nutrition and an environment, it'll just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And you know what? Our desires will too. If we feed them and, and protect them from the Spirit of God mortifying and killing them, they'll just get bigger and bigger and bigger. And if you think that something as a teenager uh, that, that you're struggling with and, and that you're involved in, perhaps it's just getting into the immoral thing or into the, the pornographic thing or just getting into the whatever, the alluring lifestyle, if you think that that's going to just stay as big as it is right now, you're crazy. It's going to just get like a dinosaur. Because if you feed it and if you don't let the Spirit of God mortify it, it will get bigger than you'll ever dream of. And that's why so many people are so despondent because their lusts are, are crushing them. They're so big. The reptilian nature of lust. And a, a maturing saint knows that and avoids reptilian desires. A maturing saint in verse 3 of chapter 4 avoids the consequences of a pleasure-dominated life. If you only are living for pleasure and pleasure dominates your decisions, and if you say, oh, I want that job because of you know this, it'll give me more freedom, and I want this vacation so I can just just have so much pleasure and I just want to do my own thing. God says, don't always be seeking pleasure. That's feeding the lusts of our flesh. That's why the, the early saints, and I know that some of them went crazy on this, but they used to do things to show their body that pleasure wasn't what they always needed. In recent times, Hudson Taylor, the great missionary to China, the pioneer, he used to sleep on the floor with one sheet over him so that he would not constantly have a soft, pleasure-desiring life because he wanted to get ready to go to China where they didn't have all the British Empire's pleasures and, and comforts. You know, that sounds a little bit you know, sadistic in our society because we are so believing that... Watch the car ads. I mean, surround yourself with leather and with perfect climate control. And, you know, and just, you know, oh, and the music, and you can, your tires will keep you on the road. Everything is pleasure in me. And, you know, you can get there just as easily in an old beat-up car for about $30,000 less. You know what I mean? It's, it's amazing. And he says, avoid the consequences of a pleasure-dominated life. And maturing saints, note how to avoid infidelity to God. Look at, look at verse 4. We can have infidelity. We can be adulterous in our relationship to God. Verse 4 says this. You are, an, you are a spiritual adulteress or adulterer if you do not know that friendship with the world is hostility toward God. Basically, what he says is this. Adultery equals friendship to the world. Friendship with the world equals anything that distracts you from worship, ministry, and devotion. Now think for a minute. Would you rather do this? I don't even know how to do it. Um, or would you rather do this? Which one draws you more? Now there is an illustration from the Bible. Would you rather watch this with your remote control watching it or get on your knees and read this. What he said is, anything that draws you away from devotion to God causes you to be God's enemy because God doesn't like that thing that's pulling your attention away. And when we get to this paragraph, it's going to be very interesting because a maturing walk of faith in chapter 4, verses 1 through 12 separates us unto God. And maturing saints demonstrate the marks of God's friends. And if you're a maturing saint, your pleasures will be in line, your friendship will be with God, and you will be humble in, in, in your lifestyle. 